Today's video topic is one that's been on my to-do list for quite a while. It's been requested uh, many times. What we're going to talk about is the gain bandwidth product and slew rate and how it applies to op amps. In addition to describing what is meant by gain bandwidth product and slew rate, we'll also demonstrate and measure uh, some of these characteristics uh, using a circuit uh, built up here on the breadboard. So let's take a look at uh, the schematic of what uh, we've got on the breadboard so you can do this yourself. We've got an LM358 op amp configured as an inverting gain amplifier. These two resistors are just a voltage divider to set up the virtual ground point. We're taking a signal out of a signal generator through an adjustable attenuator so I can control the magnitude of the voltage going into the amplifier. Terminated that in 50 ohms so the uh, signal generator sees a constant load. AC coupling that into the amplifier. And I've got three different feedback resistors that we can put in here to configure uh, basically an inverting gain of 1, uh, negative 10, or negative 100, or 0 dB, 20 dB, and 40 dB. This discussion will apply to the vast majority of general purpose op amps on the market because the vast majority of these op amps are internally designed to be compensated with a single dominant pole. Uh, what that means is, is that the open loop frequency response is going to fall with a this single pole response which really means that the gain, open loop gain, falls at a rate of 6 dB per octave change in frequency or 20 dB per decade change in frequency. So each time we increase the frequency by a factor of 10, the gain falls by 20 dB. And this is uh, basically what we call a single pole response. So at, low, at very low frequencies at DC, you're left with the maximum you know, open loop gain uh, of the op amp, which is typically you know, maybe uh, 100 volts per millivolt, something like that, a factor of about 100,000. But typically at frequencies you know, below a kilohertz or even lower sometimes, the frequency response breaks and then falls at this rate. The single pole response has a, a nice property in that the, the product of the voltage gain that you configure when you set up a, a closed loop amplifier like this, the product of that voltage gain and the bandwidth that will result from that amplifier is a constant value called the gain bandwidth product. Again, in most cases, the gain bandwidth product is also equal to the small signal unity gain bandwidth. Uh, so again, for unity gain, if the AV is equal to 1, then the bandwidth is equal to uh, the gain bandwidth product would be the unity gain bandwidth. At other gains, let's, let's say we set up a, an amplifier with a gain of you know, 10, that would be 20 dB. So 10 times, in this case, 100 kilohertz would be 1 meg. If we set up a closed loop gain of 100, or 40 dB, then 100 times 10K is also 1 meg. So you can kind of see how this product plays in. Now the nice thing about that is, you know, typically using it the other way around, is let's say you need uh, an op amp circuit that has got a gain of a, a particular value, you can then predict what the bandwidth will be by basically taking the gain bandwidth product divided by that gain you're going to use, and that will essentially tell you the bandwidth. We'll measure the bandwidth of this op amp under a couple of different gain conditions. So right now I've got it configured with a uh, 10K feedback resistor and that gives us an inverting gain of 10 or 20 dB. And I've got the attenuator uh, set up so that the output amplitude of the amplifier is 1 volt peak to peak. So to find the 3 dB bandwidth we just increase the frequency of the signal generator until the output amplitude falls to 707 millivolts peak to peak. We'll just reach over here and start adjusting the frequency up on the uh, signal generator. And as we move up here, we can see the amplitude starting to fall. I'm going to increase the sweep speed of the scope here a little bit so we can still see the waveform. Keep increasing that waveform frequency. Now we can see we're starting to get down oh, right about here or so. Right about here we're at that 707 millivolts peak to peak. That's The amplitude has fallen and our frequency on the signal generator is uh, just about 63 kilohertz uh, 63 kilohertz at a factor of 10x. So if we've got a gain of 20 dB or 10x 
and a 3 dB frequency of about 63 kilohertz, that means that the gain bandwidth product for this particular op amp under these conditions is about uh, 630 kilohertz. So let's take one more measurement point and see if that uh, all lines up. We'll start by bringing the uh, frequency back down to about one kilohertz here again and slow the scope back up and uh, I'll take out this 10k resistor let's stick in a 100k resistor the 100k resistor will now configure a gain of uh, 100x so I'm going to decrease the input amplitude by a factor of 100 so now I've got that same 1 volt peak to peak occurring at that 1 kilohertz so we'll again increase the frequency of the signal generator until that signal level drops down to about 707 millivolts. And that should be coming right up about here. Let's see. One more click or two. Looks like right about here. So we're right at about 6.4 kilohertz. So 6.4 kilohertz now with a gain of 100x. So again, 100x times 6.4 kilohertz gives me the 640 uh, kilohertz for the uh, gain bandwidth product and that's pretty close to the 630 kilohertz that we calculated for the 10x. I've plotted those two results on the graph paper here. So for the gain of negative uh, 10 or 20 dB we had a measured bandwidth of about 63 kilohertz and then for the gain of 40 dB or negative 100 we had a gain or a bandwidth of about 6.4 kilohertz. So I've plotted those two here, and if we drew a line between them, we can see you know they kind of line up on a straight line here. Uh, the DC uh, open loop gain of this op amp is somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, between 90 and uh, 95 dB, and uh, so that's kind of where that break point would be. And we can see that this leads to a unity gate bandwidth of about that 630, 640 uh, kilohertz uh, shown down here. So let's go the other way and go down to unity gain with the op amp and see if we can get out to that uh, 630, 640 kilohertz uh, unity gain bandwidth. So we'll replace the feedback resistor with a 1K feedback resistor. That will configure us for an inverting gain of 1. I'll uh, increase my signal amplitude here so that I'm back up to about that same 1 volt uh, peak to peak. And let's start uh, increasing uh, the frequency here. Now, as we keep increasing this up, I'm going to speed the scope up again. Okay, so we're up at uh, nearly 100 kilohertz here. We're starting to drop, but uh, we can see that we're dropping now to 700, you know, millivolts here. But I'm only at a frequency of about 130 kilohertz. So what's going on? Well, the key to what's going on here is that we are now being slew rate limited. Take a look at that waveform. That is no longer a sinusoid. So we're now we're running into the slew rate limit of this op amp uh, for this given frequency. So let's talk about what's meant by slew rate limit. The op amp slew rate is basically defined as the maximum rate, how quickly the op amp can move the output voltage. And this is often limited by the internal compensation capacitor and the available current to drive it. Uh, it's just what I'm talking about here, if we look at the schematic of an LM358, this is out of an old National Semiconductor Data Book, this is the compensation capacitor we're talking about. And oftentimes there's a limited amount of current that's available to charge or discharge that capacitor. And that you know, gives rise essentially to you know, a limited rate at which the, the output can be swung. So this is a problem typically for large signals, not so much of a problem for small signals. Because what you'll find is that large signals, even at the same frequency, have a higher slew rate. Let me show you what I mean by that. So the slew rate of a signal is essentially the measure of how quickly the voltage has to move, or essentially the slope of the voltage versus time. So for this particular signal at uh, just 10 kilohertz, at, uh, at this signal level we can see the slope, the maximum slope that you reach is about that. If I increase that signal amplitude, I haven't changed the frequency, but that slope has now changed. So higher amplitude signals uh, place a larger demand on the op amp in terms of slew rate because the output has to move you know, faster in a given amount of time.
So oftentimes, you know, the slew rate limit of the op amp will become the bandwidth limiting factor, you know, even before you, you've essentially run into the gain bandwidth product, especially for larger signals. Okay, and uh, as we saw in the scope, as signals get larger, the slope gets steeper and we need a faster slew rate. So what can happen is for small signals, okay, you've got no problem generating a given frequency, but as that signal gets larger in amplitude, you actually may run into the slew rate limit of the op amp and therefore distort the waveform because they can't move the voltage any faster with time. And that's what we saw when we just tried to look at the unity gain uh, bandwidth or the unity gain response of the op amp. Of course, we can visually see this. If we look at the response of this uh, sine wave and unity gain, and a, again, relatively large amplitude here, uh, if I increase the frequency here, watch what's happening with the slope of that waveform. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to grab uh, frequency, start increasing that. You can see the slope is increasing steeper, steeper, steeper. And it gets to a point where it can't get any steeper and the waveform is now getting distorted. Okay, so if we take a look at that slope, it uh, looks like it's uh, pointing up at about uh, one o'clock. In fact, another way to look at this, let me slow this down again, and let's change the waveform to a square wave. And here you can actually see there's that slew rate limit. Even though the square wave coming out of this signal generator is on the order of about 5 nanoseconds uh, rise and fall time, we're looking here at uh, 4 microseconds of division, so we're taking the better part of 4 or 5 microseconds to swing that point. So we're looking at the slew rate limit of the op amp. And uh, so if I go back to the sine wave here, as I increase the frequency here again, I'll leave my uh, pointer, we can actually see we're running into that slew rate limit, we're not going any steeper, so instead of getting a higher frequency sine wave, we're just distorting that waveform because we just can't keep up. And that's essentially what uh, slew rate looks like, or slew rate limiting looks like on an op amp. Oh, so how do we uh, get around that problem? Well, typically, as I was mentioned earlier, if the amplitude of a signal is lower, the slew rate limits are less. So if I reduce the amplitude, you can see that signal now starts to look more sinusoidal. I reduce the amplitude here a little bit more. You know, it's more sinusoidal again, and the signal looks more ideal because that lower amplitude signal doesn't have as steep of an edge at that at that frequency. So that's why uh, oftentimes when you see unity gain bandwidth defined in an op amp, it's defined effectively for quote unquote small signals because that's the only way you're going to be able to get around the slew rate limit for large signals. Now sometimes a slew rate is specified in the data sheet, sometimes it's just shown in a graph like this for large signal pulse response. For an a very fast input pulse here at unity gain, the output is going to have be slew rate limited. And you'll also find sometimes that the slew rate for the rising edge and the fall rate, falling edge won't be the same because there may be a different current available for charging or discharging that internal compensation capacitor. So for the, in this particular data sheet for this LM358, this is showing about a, you know, a two and a half volt rise over 10 microseconds. So that gives rise to about 0 0.2, 0 0.25 volts per microsecond. And that's oftentimes the way you'd see slew rate specified in terms of volts per microsecond. So let's look at what uh, this op amp is doing. So if I switch the waveform over to a square wave, I can see that uh, that slope uh, you know, it's being governed by the slew rate limit. I just turn a pair of cursors on here and have those cursors positioned on that. I can read directly off the scope that we're looking at about uh, 203 kilovolts per second, which also translates to about 0.2 volts per microsecond. So that basically lines up with about what we saw in the data sheet. So we can relate that back to, uh, to sinusoidal frequency as well. So again, for this op amp, we're looking at uh, about 0.2 volts per microsecond. And let's say uh, you know we're going to be putting a sine wave through uh, your amplifier, and you know how what peak voltage you're going to need out of that. So you can basically calculate the slew rate of the sine wave through this formula. You take the peak voltage of the sine wave multiplied by 2 pi times the frequency of that sine wave, and that will give you the slope, or the maximum slope, the steepest that that voltage needs to change. So as long as the, for the signal amplitude that you need to use, 
and the frequency, the maximum frequency you need to use, as long as the slew rate of that uh, sine wave is less than the slew rate limit for the op amp, uh, then you'd be able to use that op amp at that frequency. So I hope you learned a little bit about what's meant by gain bandwidth product and slew rate and slew rate limiting and how either of these things might determine the ultimate frequency response of your op amp stage. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and we'll see you next time.